In this video we're gonna learn how to design an endurance plan for boxing using both research and common sense. Now you only need to spend about two minutes in the ring with a high pressure fighter to really grasp the importance of endurance in boxing so I'm not gonna go through that. But there are some factors in boxing that will contribute to your fatigue even if you have good endurance and those are your ability to stay calm and the opposition you're meeting, the pressure your opponent is giving you. If the pressure is high you need to be able to match that pressure and your endurance level needs to match your opponent, otherwise you're gonna gas out. Now, as an athlete striving for greatness, you should never leave those for chance. You should be prepared for the worst. And skills is also a big factor to how tired you will get. A skilled boxer will have the ability to control the pace of the fight and limit the opponent's attack through defensive maneuvers, footwork, head movement and various holding strategies. An unskilled fighter who lacks defensive skills will take unnecessary punishment and this will skyrocket fatigue. There are three main concepts in this video that we're gonna go through. Aerobic endurance, anaerobic endurance and relaxation skills. They are all important when we're designing a conditioning plan for boxing. This is a very standard time frame for boxing and we need to keep this in mind when we're designing a conditioning plan. And boxing is never linear effort, it's always high effort, then it's medium effort, low effort, it's always a mix. You go inside and throw powerful combinations, then you go on the outside and chill a bit, move around. Then again, it's high effort, low effort. And you can only rest one minute between rounds, so you never really feel fully recovered after one round. And all of those we need to keep in mind. And just to prove a point, those are the typical actions that happen in a standard amateur boxing match. And... Take this with a pinch of salt, it's based on means and averages, but it should give you a general idea. This study analyzed the semi-final and the final matches of the 2012 London Olympic Games. And they find out that the average activity to rest ratio in a match was 18 to 1. That is crazy, and it really highlights the importance of good endurance in boxing. In addition to that, novice boxers will, over have, will often have an activity to rest ratio of 9 to 1. Theoretically, the higher level of competition means higher activity rate, therefore higher demand of conditioning. Those are the energy systems in your body and we need to emphasize them all when it comes to boxing. They all serve their purpose. The two main categories are the aerobic system and the anaerobic system. The aerobic system is dependent on oxygen to function and you can think of it of your you can think of it as your overall tank of energy. And this one is only active when you're doing low to medium effort type of activities. So let's say you stick in and out in a boxing match, you use footwork, you move around, head movement, those type of efforts use the aerobic system. The anaerobic system, however, is dependent on non-oxidative sources, so glucose and creatine phosphate. It doesn't depend on oxygen. This one is active when you're doing very powerful actions, like you try to knock someone's head off, go for heavy powerful combinations, or you get in a clinch situation and you use maximum effort. It's 10 seconds left in the round and you go all out. Then you use the anaerobic system. And we need to train both of those systems accordingly because they are both important in different situations throughout a boxing match. So if we were to generalize, boxing would be somewhere around here. And different sources will conclude different results to whether aerobic or anaerobic endurance is the most important in boxing. But the truth is it's really hard to generalize. It's simply based on too many factors and we need to use our common sense here. So yeah, like we said, aerobic fitness is your body's ability to transport oxygen to working muscles and it is measured in VO2 max oftentimes. So on average the VO2 max levels of amateur boxers on elite level will be anywhere from 50 to 65 milliliters per kilogram per minute. And yeah, obviously we will always have outliers who are higher than that, but we're talking about means and averages right now. And those are good numbers, but they are not really comparable to endurance athletes on elite level, like cross-country skiers or triathlon runners, but if we compare them to an average unactive male, those are very good numbers. This study suggests that high-level boxers oftentimes have superior aerobic capacity than the lower-level boxers, and I mean, is this really a coincidence? Chances are they work harder and exert themselves better than the lower 
class boxers and they have that championship mindset. I mean, if aerobic capacity was the only factor to boxing success, you could take an endurance runner and having beat an experienced boxer, but that's not how it works, obviously. And one lesser known fact about aerobic capacity is that it will allow you to recover faster from those intensive bursts that you will experience in a boxing match. It is a gateway for all the other energy systems. Because a good aerobic system will help you to resynthesize ATP, which is basically the energy in your body, for the anaerobic system. So as an amateur you might compete multiple times in the same day, so you also need good aerobic fitness for this to recover in between. So, how do we train the aerobic system, aerobic endurance? Let's go back to the chart with the energy systems. There are millions of combinations. Basically, any activity above 2 minutes or so equals cardio, equals aerobic endurance. Just to prove a point, you don't have to run exclusively to develop cardio. We'll go into that later, but any activity that raises your heart that is above 2 minutes, this will train your cardio. Ask yourself, what intensity is a boxing match performed in? For example, would you, would you perform a boxing match in the same intensity as a marathon? A uh, two hours run with very low effort. Like This is not similar to a boxing match. If you're gonna train aerobic capacity, at least choose a format that's a little bit remotely like boxing. For example, avoid the marathons and the ultra marathons. Like 5 kilometers, 10 kilometers at best, that is enough when you're training for aerobic endurance, but there are different ways to train that. We have steady state cardio and interval cardio. Steady state cardio is any continuous activity that increases the heart rate in a controlled tempo for a like a straight line. You can run, you can jump pro, bag work, anything. Just do anything for a medium effort 10 to 60 minutes. Then you can train a steady state cardio style. If you don't, you also have another option, you have interval cardio, and this is smaller segments of activity followed by short rest periods, but the effort is therefore higher. So for instance, rounds of 2 to 5 minutes of intense activity to one, with 1 to 3 minutes of active recovery for 5 to 10 sets, and there are millions of combinations. 5 by 3 minutes, 10 by 2 minutes, 6 by 4 minutes. The difference here is that the intensity will be higher, because you're gonna divide them into blocks. They both have their places and we're gonna go for that later. Another very underrated thing about cardio training or endurance training is that it can be done in a boxing specific manner that will both improve your endurance and your boxing skills. So instead of doing cardio, say running or do it on an exercise bike, you can do cardio on the heavy bag, you can use jumping ropes on the agility ladder, then you will work on your technique while training your heart rate at the same time, your cardiovascular system. That is two birds in one stone, and don't underestimate the effectiveness of this. I get it, we used to watch all of those Rocky movies where he runs through the city or through a forest or something, like those old school movies of boxers just running, and we, we are kind of biased. We think that this is the only method to improve our endurance, but realize that's kind of outdated. Like Now we, we know the science behind it all. We know that to increase your cardio, you just have to move. And any movement, as long as it's hard enough, will improve your cardio. It doesn't matter what it is. So why limit yourself to a movement that is not used in boxing? Make it boxing specific. Now let's talk about anaerobic endurance. Again, sometimes the activity will be so high that your body won't have time to provide muscles with enough oxygen, so it needs to rely on other fuel sources exclusively, like glycogen or phosphocreatines. So high intensity actions, going for the knockout, intense combinations, those will all stress your anaerobic system and it is an extremely important component in boxing that is often overlooked. It cannot be. It's very important. And when the demand is very high and you keep going on, lactate builds up in your body, which is what gives you your muscles this slow, awkward and sour feeling. And this is what we will learn, learn to withstand and fight through anaerobic training. And when you're doing medium to low effort aerobic training, like a 10 km run like we talked about earlier, this cardio training, you don't experience this kind of fatigue, so it needs to be trained separately, like we're gonna do right now. Lactate levels can sometimes reach up to 14.5 millimoles per liter during a match, and this is a very significant level and it highlights the importance of 
anaerobic conditioning. If your lactate levels are too high for the next round, it will just lead to premature exhaustion, which is basically a gas out, and this is a big no-no. And typically lactate levels, they will increase successively each round, which means that every round will be tougher than the previous, and as boxers we won't have the luxury for resting for too long to, for the system to recover completely. It's only one minute of rest between rounds, and this is not enough for all the lactic acid to decline, and this makes anaerobic endurance even more important. So how do we train the anaerobic system? Once again, let's go back to the energy systems chart. We need to stick to the anaerobic time frame, so to speak, and make appropriate intervals. Once again, just like aerobic training, the method you choose can be anything, running, bag work, whatever you want. The important part is the time frame and the effort, the intensity. As we can see, there are different spectrums of the of anaerobic training. We have very short type of aerob anaerobic training that is dependent on creatine and the longer one that is more dependent on glucose. For the one to four seconds part you see in the graph here, this is trained separately through power and strength training so we don't need to worry about that. We want to train our more the endurance type of anaerobic training like power endurance as it, as it is known as. like going all out for 30 seconds or so with maximal effort, doing very high effort activity for a lengthy period of time like we would do in boxing. So this means intervals of anywhere from 30 seconds to 2 minutes at top I would say, but the difference here is the intensity, it is done with very high intensity, much more intense than aerobic intervals. The rest periods between rounds will be anywhere from 1 minute to 5 minutes, a lot longer than aerobic once again. And it is, it is a short duration, so it will be so intense, we need to go all out in those rounds and really feel that lactate build up. You're not gonna do this like a 40 minutes, 10 kilometer run, this is something else. You need to feel that lactate that you otherwise wouldn't feel in low to medium effort cardio training. We want to experience this so that we're prepared for a similar scenario in a boxing match. And as time goes on you can tweak either the activity time or the rest periods a bit. But initially I would, higher, I would recommend a higher rest period, and then as time goes on you cut it down a bit. So yeah, once again, any activity within the anaerobic time frame. Whether you want to sprint, go for the heavy bag, sled push, jumping rope, anything you want, as long as it's very intensive work within this time frame. And one of many anaerobic conditioning formats is an interval style on pads or the heavy bag, for instance. 10 rounds of 1 minute very high effort with 1 minute recovery between each round. And if done right, this will most likely take your lactate levels up and above the 10 mark. Now lastly we're gonna go over relaxation skills and countless of athletes and coaches will obsess over the fact that boxing is of such intense and violent nature and this of course requires excellent physical conditioning. Well, true. but. Relaxation skills are also a huge piece of the puzzle actually if you think about it. And yes, you heard that right, it is a skill and it needs practice. Being able to relax and stay calm under pressure will save you tons of energy, and I mean tons. Being relaxed means that you're effective with your movement, you save energy, you get the best outcome for the lowest possible cost. And this skill, this is a never-ending process, it requires years of practice to master. Some solutions athletes will use are meditation techniques, they try to get in the moment, trying to find a flow, they use visualization techniques, and some even use positive affirmations that they chant to themselves. But field experience is always the best teacher, and when you're new you will find it harder to relax of course, like everything else. Just know that this is a, this is natural, and make a conscious effort to prepare yourself better next time. The first step to being more relaxed is just realizing that you need to be, as cliche as it might sound, be cognizant of the fa fact that you may be a bit tense, that you may be using some bad movements, like consciously relax every session. If you look at top boxers like throughout history like Muhammad Ali or Floyd Mayweather, they are extremely relaxed, they just, they're just dancing around, their arms they are like spaghetti, they, are, they don't have a tense muscle in their body, they just float around, it doesn't matter if hundreds of thousands of people are watching them, it doesn't matter, they are very efficient with their movement and energy. This is the definition of relaxation, and they will save tons of energy while their tense opponent will waste tons. 
And this is kind of related to the previous point we talked about, defensive abilities. Why would this be a component in conditioning, you may ask? Because your ability to defend yourself and avoid big damage will save you tons of energy once again. Let's say you get hit with a sledgehammer of a punch, which is on the merge of knocking you out. Then your body will probably go into the fight or flight response, which costs a shit ton of energy. The sympathetic nervous system is activated and it gives you a sort of a boost, your pupils are dilated, you get a tunnel vision, your muscles get very tense, increased muscle tension, blood flow to your muscles and much more. This is your body's way of defending itself from danger, but it comes at a huge cost of energy. And if you keep absorbing damage, like you close your eyes, you look down, you don't know what's happening and this will boost even more. After this boost is over, you will experience an ultimate exhaustion. What if you have avoided such a scenario? And this is related also to the previous point, staying calm under pressure. And experienced boxers, they can handle this pressure, they can stay calm under pressure better than lesser experienced boxers and they can regulate the fight or flight response better. This comes with skills, this comes with experience. Let me give you an example scenario. Imagine you're up against the ropes in a corner during a boxing match. And let's say you can't defend yourself here. Your energy expenditure will skyrocket because your work area is reduced, your back is blocked, your left and right is blocked, your opponent is in front of you throwing punches at you. And, I mean, if you cannot get out of this situation, you are trapped, you will get hit there, you turn to the left, you can't go anywhere, you're trapped and your fatigue will set in tremendously. And this is, you could have avoided this situation if you knew how to defend yourself and get out of here. Don't let yourself get to this situation in the first place. And this is all about defensive abilities. Now, with so much components to address when it comes to conditioning for boxing, where do we begin? The answer is this, periodization. Now, there's a lot of terms for periodizations, like we have block periodization, linear periodization and all of that. Just forget that. Periodization simply means planning. Let's say you're in the off-season and it's 12 weeks before competitions start. Here is a very, very general type of periodization that you can do based on what we have learned today. From week 1 to 3 you can do the steady state aerobic training that we talked about. This 40 minutes like just straight medium effort type of cardio to really increase the gas tank, that overall tank that we talked about, the first 3 weeks. Then once you have established that, you can go over to aerobic intervals, like rounds of 3 minutes, rounds of 5 minutes, like we talked about. Go scroll back to the previous part of this video if you forgot that. We are still emphasizing aerobic capacity here, but with a bit higher effort, and we, it will prepare us for the next step that you're about to hear right now. Week 7 to 9, anaerobic intervals. That is rounds of the lengthier spectrum of the anaerobic time frame, like let's say rounds of one minute or max two minutes, but very high effort and higher rest periods. Now we will do those powerful actions and train ourselves to handle those better, our power endurance. Then once you have addressed that, week 10 to 12, we go to the anaerobic intervals with the shorter rounds and I mean maximal effort. Those are the hell weeks. Let's say you do rounds of 30 seconds, but you go all out, like your life depended on this. This will be a perfect transition later into the competitions that you're gonna go through. This is a very simple way to periodize a conditioning plan for boxing. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something from this. And if you have any questions, you can type them in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.